Hi, and thanks for watching Computer Science MS5. Today we're starting from the very beginning of the OCR GCSE spec, and we're looking at computer systems. So, by the end of the day, we should be able to define what a computer system is, describe the purpose and difference between hardware and software, and distinguish between general, dedicated, and embedded systems. So, some key words are hardware, software, general, dedicated, and embedded. So, let's start off with uh, the simple question of what is a computer system? Um, if you want, you can pause the video and try and get a definition for yourself in two sentences. And so moving forward, we've got mobile phone, airplane, PlayStation, and what actually looks like a traditional computer system. So what is it that makes all of these a computer system? Well, you might recognize these symbols from flowcharts. And if you know what they are, you probably have figured out that first part. And if you can get what the collection of things on the left is and the collections of things on the right are, then you've probably worked out the definition and can also give some examples in justifying what they are. So let's take a look at this. A computer system is a machine that processes data. So a computer system takes in data as inputs. It will then process that data and produces an output as a result. And computer systems are made up of a combination of hardware and software. So an input could be an electronic signal, for example, a mouse click or a keyboard press, or you bashing buttons on your PlayStation control. And the process is that data and instructions inside your computer system that are lots of calculations and comparisons that are happening. And the end result is an output that is potentially displayed on your monitor, like really awesome graphics in a video game. So we need to be able to def define the terms hardware and software. And uh, we could draw some examples as well, if you like. So feel free to pause this video. Um, computer systems consist of hardware, software, and they need to work together to process that data and complete a task. So what is hardware? What is software? And as a stretch, what are two types of software computers have? What are two types of software computers have? Well, let's take a look. Hardware, the physical components that make up a computer system. So hardware are things that you can touch. Hardware are pieces and components that you can touch. Another word for components is parts. So the physical parts that make up a computer system. And those are some of the physical parts that we can see, like the box that contains all the important stuff inside it, a keyboard, a mouse, screens. You actually have some peripherals there as well, but those are still hardware. And then you have software, the applications and programs or instructions a computer runs on. Um, and yeah, you use the term apps every single day. That's just short for applications. And all of these apps like Snapchat and Google and Viber and Instagram and WhatsApp, these are all software. You can't physically touch them, but they are made of lots of lines of code that compress data and process and enable us to actually use the hardware and do something useful. And there is a little answer to the stretch. Two types of software are system software and application software. So all the apps that you can see there are essentially application software, they're programs. And system software are things like the operating system. So we've looked at what a computer system is, and now we want to kind of define three different types of computer systems. So have a look at the three images on the screen. Um, they're all computer systems, uh, but they take a slightly different shape and form, and where they might all do the same thing on the screen, there are some slight differences. So we're going to take a look at general computer systems versus dedicated computer systems. So a general purpose computer system can perform many different tasks. And an example of this is a smartphone. It can take photos and you can surf the webs. And most of the computers or traditional computers that we use are general purpose, like your iPad, your um, smartphone, and actually your smartwatch as well, because it does more than just tells the time. So there are a couple of examples of a general purpose computer system. And the other sat nav that we have on the screen is what we would actually call a dedicated computer system, as it can only perform one dedicated function. So the example in the picture is a sat nav. The function is it navigates. It allows you to get from A to Z while projecting your position on a map. Um, another example of a dedicated system could be traffic lights, which the process that they are carrying out is 
switching the lights on and off in sequence on repeat. And at the bottom, we've got a few different examples of general purpose and dedicated systems. And if you like, you can pause the video and try and group them together. So these are getting a little bit trickier to distinguish between, especially now as we start to have the internet of things and technologies getting smarter and more sophisticated. So on the left, we've got general purpose, like a desktop PC, a laptop, a smartwatch, and a smartphone, because all those computer systems are quite advanced and can do more than one thing. You can send an email from your phone, you can make phone calls, you can send text messages, you can take photos, and some of those things you can even do on a watch. But if we take a look at the dedicated side, we've got a smart meter, and even though we we have the word smart in front of it, smart meter is still designed to monitor your electricity and your gas in your house. It does have one dedicated function. You can't make phone calls on your smart meter. The same with an electric thermostat or potentially a weather station, a digital radio or a Fitbit, which again could be classed as a smart watch, but realistically it is designed to track your fitness. And finally a digital watch, which even though it's got things like an alarm clock and a stopwatch, it's all dedicated to telling the time. So the third type of system we're going to look at are embedded systems. And embedded systems are computer systems with a dedicated function inside a larger system. So are embedded systems dedicated systems or are dedicated systems embedded systems? Well, the first one. Embedded systems are computer systems with a dedicated function within a larger mechanical or electronic system, and they are used to monitor and control machinery. So here are a couple of examples. I've got a microwave. Well, a microwave isn't necessarily a computer system, but the little screen that we have there where we can track how long our food's going to take and the little program input dials there that we have are an embedded system because it's a dedicated function built into a larger electronic machine. Um, and if we take a look here, previously we said a weather station was a dedicated system, but in this example, this weather station could also be considered a dedicated system because it is a computer system built within a larger mechanical machine and it has a dedicated function. And finally, we have like a car infotainment system. And actually a lot of cars nowadays have lots of embedded systems, so like start-stop systems or engine control systems. When you switch on your car, there's so many electronic systems that are in play and they're all built into a larger mechanical machine, the car. So what are some of the advantages of using an embedded system in a larger electrical or mechanical system instead of a general purpose system? Why don't I just attach an iPad to my weather station or why don't I plug my microwave into my computer? Well, it's cheaper to make than a general purpose system. My embedded system in a microwave is quite a simple piece of machinery and it doesn't require too many circuits. So it's also more efficient at doing its task as it has a dedicated function and it is gonna enable us to access the internet of things. And that's something that's developing a lot more in terms of dedicated systems and embedded systems. So, that's it for computer systems. You should be able to define a computer system as a device that takes inputs, processes them, and produces outputs, and is a combination of hardware and software. You know now that hardware are the physical components of a computer system, and software are the applications and software and programs that they run on. And you can distinguish between general purpose systems and dedicated systems as ones that have many, many functions, and ones that just have a single function. And finally, embedded systems 